Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big, big shit. shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big, big shit. shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon- check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding. Official Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Not not even on my dad. Man, we got a guy here today, y'all. He really don't need no introduction. He's been on the show before, man. He uh he helped usher us through the dough, man. It's going down today, man. Yeah. We got my boy Fat Pimp in the building. Hey, 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 shout out to Exxon on the intro. Man, everybody mm-hmm. say she that, man. It. Hey, you she sell it, man. Say, man, a lot of niggas been trying to figure mm-hmm. man, who was that? Who's the last person that really just not rain? I don't even count him because he always messing with me about right. it. Who is it? It was somebody it was that was like, man, shows. It was shows. Mm-hmm. Joe. Joe, like, who, who is that, man? Yeah, he was like, man, that thing he going in. He actually went and looked her up just yeah. because of it. Because mm-hmm. you got it still the show. It's like, if if, if if I'm in a shower and I hear that YouTube on, and I hear that, I was talking, one, 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 one. you got <laughs> to know. Yeah, I, I, I peep my head, I can shout at you on there, man. So, yeah. But, so. but the crazy thing is that everybody who come on here, we always give them the opportunity to make us an intro song. Say, hey, mm-hmm. step up to the plate, make an intro song. Yeah. If it's good, we'll put it on. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Ain't nobody It's going to be like power. Now, it was one, two people done it, but it didn't but come it, through. It, it didn't come y'all close see, to y'all, 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 See, I want one? Nah, I mean, okay. it's hard. I to, I need it's hard, stuff. bro. It's hard, right? But this way, we want one. We would love to eventually change it or have an upgrade. Because we have others in there, but we just love that one. We always play that my boy, one. My boy went hard on this one. This ain't nothing but some boss talk. If I sit it, then I stand on it. Shooters on my side. That's on command, homie. Ain't nothing but some boss talk. Mm. I can get my hands on the word. That's PGF yeah. yeah. shout, man. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Boss talk. You might have think this came from him. I'm from the trench. I got this out the kitchen. This ain't they gonna go down through there. I like that. <laughs> Like that. Man, you know, but I mean, you know, he out of Atlanta, man, and uh, that's the Riz Deshaun's best friend, man. Sure. So and when he came down, man, it was just organic. He was like, man, I got, he made Boss Talk and he was on his way here, man, and he was promoting and everything, and it was like, it just fit. It just fit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the dope part, man. So, man, you know, the way we do, man, we just trying to show love, man. That's what, how we been doing, man. Y'all should use that one, like, for special interviews. We do it sometimes. Like, like, yeah, yeah. Just that, sometimes. That shit was hard. That, was, yeah, that, that whole thing like be that, going, man. Because it's real, it's real gangster, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It just flips a different way, man. Sure, so how sure. you been, man? I've been great. I ain't going to say good or okay. I've been great, man. Uh, I'm surviving. Coaching baseball. Uh, coaching baseball? Yeah, yeah. That's man, cool. you know, when the person say coaching something, I think about that uh, guy who, the got, guy who got killed the other uh, week yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Only, Coach, uh, Mike. Coach Mike. You knew him? Did you know yeah, him? I'm, I'm from Dallas, but I know everybody. So you knew Coach Mike? Yeah, I knew Coach what Mike. type of guy was he? Solid, man. He raised them kids right, man. Really? Yeah, I ain't had, with that, How man. long had he been doing it? I, I couldn't even tell you, bro. I just had kids, so I don't know how long he been doing it, but me having a kid in you, football, had, you met him? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do something. you know exactly what happened? Nah. I don't know. The only thing I know is I... I found it like everybody else. I got a group text with uh, everybody right. from Houston. Mm-hmm. And um, well, somebody was like, yo, you, you, have you been on the internet? And they said, check your phone. So I looked and I seen it. I, I, I don't like watching stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So when I seen it, it just it just made my heart melt because I've been out there in situations. We was in Oklahoma and got into it with the other team and got into it with the refs. It happens. You know what I mean? It happens. That's why you have to be level-headed. You got to understand it's just sports, man. It's just peewee sports. But it shouldn't get that mm-hmm. ex- to that extent where you feel like you're going to pull out a firearm. And if you are that hot-headed, yeah. don't carry the firearm with you out there. Leave it yeah. in the car or leave it somewhere else. And plus, we from the old school, man. Even if y'all did get physical, y'all could have fought in the parking lot. Y'all right. could have fought in the parking lot. Y'all could have waited till y'all seen each other somewhere else. The fact that y'all damaged these kids for the rest of their lives... Some of them might not even yeah. want to be out there. They'll be scared to go that. out there. I can't there. stand on that, man. No, and, and you know the thing about it is, man, you know, I don't know how intense it was. I kind of with, with my boy Quan, he coaches too. Quan, mm-hmm. Quan, he be over here a lot, and he's grew up around me. And that's where he went to try to, uh, you know, make things a little bit easier for him mm-hmm. out here instead of getting in these streets. Because and when it ended up being kids. more street. 
Mm-hmm. It's over a, there. Let me tell you something about football in Texas. Really, Dallas. I'm gonna say Houston it's too. It's competitive. Dallas is competitive. Then you gotta understand you dealing with hood mentality. People that's been in the streets their whole entire life, and now they out here coaching boys that they want to see go to the pros. It's 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 dangerous, man. And bro. and I heard some betting going on too. I don't know nothing about it. I'm that. just telling you. I heard it. Now I'm watching these niggas. Hey, listen. I'm, you know I'm, me. I'm I don't be out there, so I be telling it. I don't know nothing. I don't the know. The hell are they doing out I'm there? They spirit. better not be out there betting on them kids, man. I'm a coach, man. I don't know nothing. I'm you hear what I'm saying? But you know what? It, it's every sport. Like if you spend money in investing in your child. Some mm-hmm. of these parents take it serious because even you had you said that show that came on the cheerleading show, yeah, where you see those moms will go in at it, they'll be fighting, mm-hmm. arguing over my daughter needs to this, my daughter, and I'm like, is it that serious? A lot of people yeah. living, a lot of people living their fantasies and through dreams their children. through their children, right? And so they trying to go above and beyond and a little too aggressive. If you really ask these kids, they don't even want to do that, right? Most of these kids in football practice, they talking about Fortnite, mm-hmm. they are dancing. <laughs> And girls, yeah, girls. <laughs> and well, see, it depends, you know. <laughs> you just never damn. know. Damn, <laughs> you never know, man. Damn. That but pimp say, damn. I was out there helping coach. Um, right, before, right. I think the year of the pandemic was letting up where they let the kids play right. again. And I realized coaching football ain't for me. Mm. I got partners that coach. I said that football ain't for me, man. Because it's why? Too, um, because I see how easy it is to lose your cool. Yeah. Because if you know something, if they if they been full gazy with the refs and stuff. And they fuck me. At baseball, I play baseball, and it's so peaceful. I get out there. It's easier. Oh, man. You get out there. I'm the only one who's aggressive on baseball. <laughs> and them white parents be out there. They just be quiet. They don't even say nothing to their kids. They just sit there and just, you know, hey, have a good game. Damn. They don't say nothing to ask So it's game. us. Oh, you like, damn right it's us. Niggas. <laughs> it's the blacks, it's niggas. It's niggas. It ain't, it ain't the blacks, it's niggas. I don't even like calling us niggas, but it's a difference on the football field. It's got... You got black folks watch, watching, and you got niggas out there acting a fool, man. <laughs> man. I got a question about, you know, different things, man. Zero, man. Uh, I just heard uh, Slim Thug, he gave a little, you know, I love what he little said, spiel though. on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you being one that you got a song you guys just did together featuring. We label mates. Yeah, y'all That's label same, mates, same too, same and y'all yeah, manager, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, how, do, how does that, how did you, when you first seen it, because you just from the outside looking mm-hmm. in like me, because that's, they on the uh, what side they on? They on the south side. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they you know that's a different world. But when you see something like that happen, what what goes through your mind when you see something? Because I hadn't. You really don't see that like that a lot, bro. I'm not even gonna answer it politically correct. My manager didn't try to like you know control what I say, but I'm gonna keep it real. Which it hurt. It hurt watching it. Not because two men can't fight because it hit the internet. You dig what I'm saying? That's the word. Um, That's it. I've told people before, Rose Rose, one of the people I idolized, somebody that I got the game from. Uh, me being from Texas, it hurt. I don't want to see that. What they got going on is, is their family business that's between them, but at the same time, I hate how people grab that clip. I hate how the fact that people pick up their phone every time there's something going on. I don't like that. So I'm trying to just stay out there business, man. I don't really want to say too much because... Anything I say nowadays can get it can, it can mm, get yeah. the whole and, thing. And, put out and let me tell y'all before I done put my foot in my mouth many a times, you know, speaking on emotions and it's done got tweeted and screenshotted and stuff like that. So nah, I don't really got too much to say on that. But the yeah. funny thing it is hurt, like though. but the funny hurt. thing is like for how I look on things, I love the fact that people are being more transparent. They say they talk about their feelings. Mm-hmm. They say what's on their mind. Right. Um, yes, it can get you in trouble when people twist and turn it and not mm-hmm. understand what you really mean. Right. That's why a lot of times, honestly, when you say things, you have to almost darn like explain yourself before you even finish saying what you're saying. Right. Just so that it won't get misconstrued in a different way. Yes, because nowadays, um, majority of people are not going to understand what your point is. I don't care what you say. Right. I can tell you it's raining outside like cats and dogs. It might be somebody say, oh, you're disrespecting the dogs. You're disrespecting the cats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just don't know. So I'm, with that uh, situation. It's pretty yeah. tough, man. I do know that Trey, you know, with the way that things are, are, are looked at upon the way that he moved for the city, the way it's perceived, it's not a good look for any confrontation to mm-hmm. come toward the stuff that he does because it somewhat ta- taunts it or, 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 you know, 
put somewhat of a strike mm-hmm. against, especially to our white constituencies. We already look a mess out here. That's and true. then, you know, for to even be caught up in any situation that mm-hmm. the, where 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 it may even in, even if you didn't have nothing just to be around stuff mm-hmm. sometime association by, you know, a, assimilation, it, it just basically makes you look a certain way. So I know that he's not good with that because of the, all the work right. that he you know, he, right. he uh, uh, seems to try to be involved in. When it came down to Harvey, I remember sending water down there and doing stuff uh, through Brandon and them and, and trying to get stuff done. And he was one of the main guys that was mm-hmm. running around with that. Or if somebody, you know, he was pulling up on different situations. Right. But that that look that we've seen on the video does not really, you know, parallel the, the look of being one that gives and a community provider and a community activist. You know what I mean? But at the so same time, that. you got to think about is we're all human beings. We are and human. And we all right. make mistakes. You know, things do happen. So we should always have a leeway of, you know, okay, well, that's a oops. Let's yeah. go ahead and brush it off. Move on. Start doing back your, you know, your community. Yeah. The only thing, it just, when, when people are humiliated openly, it's a harder pill to swallow, so I understand where you're coming from when you say you hate to see the phones out because now it's everywhere, and right. and now people are going to be sharing it. It could become a meme like that uh, Michael Jordan meme or whatever where mm-hmm. you just always being played with because of that, you know what I mean? Um, the one deep song and all kind, it's all kind of stuff right. that people will do with that. So, you know, I don't know, you know, I've met Trey, you see him on the wall, but I never met Zero, but I definitely know it's a Texas thing. And yeah, basically it, it, being it, in it, Texas. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you like this, man, and I'm gonna say this on the camera, I, I'm staying out of it, but at the end of the day, that's, that's Ace Time business, and that's I'm, I'm gonna let, I'm just let the mojis handle that. Exactly. Just because, mm-hmm. Whatever I say, it's gonna be taken the wrong way. Wrong right. way, you yeah. Know what I'm saying, so. yeah, definitely. Um, and, we, I, and be clear, I've told you, I come from that fighting era, so like, that's not what bothers me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Fighting, it is what it is. We can punch it out right now and be breathing hard. You know what I mean, and get past it. But at the end of the day, I'm not in that man's shoe. Exactly. You know. So, well, one thing I can say about it, man, uh, the music. When I listened to that song that you guys did together, how yeah. did y'all come up with that? That whole song and how did y'all? I know he's your label mate, but the mm-hmm. art of ratchet. Like, like, how did y'all uh, come up with with that whole you know concept? So Derek McKinney, who's my manager right now, um, out of H Town, been knowing him for years. He's been helping me when I was me and Ronnie was dealing with Dirty Water. Um, but he came to me one day and was like, "Hey, you know, uh, we got a show a tour with Jaru. Not a show, got a tour with Jaru. Tim Ned was traveling with Jaru all across the the world. They in the Netherlands and all different places. And they're like, yo, come come rock out with us." Start rocking out with them. Start doing some songs. Next thing you know, you're like, know what? We're going to do a group. What are we going to call the group? All Direction. I'm like, yeah, okay. First, I was a little skeptical, right. right? He do business a little different than me. I'm used to going to the studio, dropping the club records, boom, 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 blowing up. He more like, nah, 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 nah. We're going to strategically do this. COVID hit. We got the whole album already done. Sony Orchard, they bullshit, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting the project out, so we had to wait. Then the miss of us waiting. We start uh, working on most songs. He said, you know what, we're gonna put zero on this. Reach out to Ro, do the business right. Ro did the song, then it was uh, real cold in Houston. He said, let's do the video. So I'm like, all right, babe, we did the video. Ro showed up, you know, Ro ain't gonna show up for everybody video, right. showed up. Next thing you know, we started getting traction with the Art of Ratchet. The uh, tour started opening up. Now we, uh, the first the first day we had was, uh, I wanna say, what's, the, what's, in, what's in May? Um, was it Memorial Weekend? Yeah, Memorial Weekend. Mm-hmm. We opened up for Coyle Ray. We opened up for Lil Dirt, 2 Chains. We go so hard, they like, yo, we need to put y'all on the rest of the tour. So I start oh, wow. rocking out with them. Next thing you know, I'm on uh, MTV Jam, BET Jams. We on no. BET Jam mm-hmm. with that video. Next thing you know, we on tour with Snoop. We go on tour with Snoop for two weeks. Then we on tour with um, The Baby. We did four shows with him. Now we on the road, Gucci Mane down in Corpus. Trap Boy Freddy, Yellow Beezy, uh, BFG Strap, they all down there. So now, we got legs going. So it's like, all right, cool. Making a little noise. We still ain't dropped the album yet. Everybody keep asking me, when you get new Fat Pimp music? I don't need Fat Pimp right now because there's a whole new rebranding process going right. on. Now it goes from people saying, I, I know what Fat Pimp going to do to who the hell is the Art of Ratchet? So next thing we do, we drop his new record called Sneaky Link. Yeah, I see now. Now we got Big Bink back in 97.9. Yeah, yeah. So it's a whole new game changer because Hollywood Zay is telling him, hey, we need to rock with Art Ratchet. They from Texas and we support. Now I'm on the radio again. Dope, dope. How does it feel to be back on the radio? 
Uh, I broke down. I ain't, gonna, I ain't no cap. I broke down when um not hearing it the first time, but just being in the car and getting a phone call, and my son is like, "Pops, you on the radio?" I'm like, yeah, "Okay, cool." He says, "No, no, no, like you on the radio again." I'm like, oh, "For real? You, you listening to it?" Then you get my, my mama hearing it. Uh, that's like the greatest feeling when you feel like you uh when your family reach out. Yeah, man. After all the work that you put in, but it's never enough, bro. Because we live in a society now, you you kind of want that gratification now. You want to mm-hmm. feel the internet love. You want to feel people recording it when they're in the cars. But when my son tripped out, they heard me on the radio. I was like, oh yeah, it was good, man. And That's then ninety seven nine, they're not playing no other Dallas music. Uh-uh. Came on the phone, not playing no other Dallas music. So to me, I'm not too my own horn, but. It's an accomplishment because right. now I'm we in the era of they can say no. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that that's it's a blessing, man. And shout out to 979. Man, that's that's they took a chance on me. And 979 in Houston. Yeah, yeah because yeah. every time yeah. every time I look on um the internet, because I'll be scrolling through to see what's going on, what's new, right. all of that. I see you everywhere. Yeah, I'm I working. see you working like crazy. Yeah. And when I'll be looking up other people to interview, you friends with everybody. I don't that's have no problem love. with nobody. That's good, that's when you called me uh, it was this morning, yeah, oh, I, yeah. Tell, I have zero problems with nobody because yeah. as hard as it is, I try to stay neutral. I preach to people when I talk to them. If there's something going on, I try to preach to them. I got a good rapport with everybody. I did the big three with Ice Cube. I, uh, saw that. I was about to ask you about yeah. that. And so, How did you get that gig? Uh, Tony Draper. Okay. Tony Drake, I ain't heard that name in a long time, man. What the hell he been doing, man? Like doing the big three with Ice Cube, hanging out with Ice Cube. Yeah, Yeah. man. I I interviewed uh, Mr. Mike a while back, and and then he talked about Tony Uh, Drake, man. man. (laughs) Yeah, man, that's a good people. We was uh, trying to do some business together a couple years back. It didn't work, but we kept a good relationship. Uh, This girl named um, this girl named Vesty, she out of Houston, Nigerian chick, and she was like, "Yo, uh, I'm in a meeting with Draper. I got something for you. All right, whatever." Get a phone call from my manager, like, yo, you wanna do a big three? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> it was live on CBS. Um, got to meet Ice Cube. How was that? The first time I went up to him, I was shitting bricks, man, because I'm like, this is cute, man. He could easily brush me off. You know, he's so paid, he don't really need to meet nobody else, but he was cool. He was like, man, I heard your name a couple years back, now I get to put a name with a face. I like the music. He said he actually had did his homework on me. It's like, cool. Because he knew you was gonna perform. Right. right. After we got through performing, I'm backstage, he come up to me, say, yo, take some pics. I'm like, cool, he said, I just got the phone with your cousin. I said, who, he said, E-40. So I'm like, damn. So oh, he know. Real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, you didn't did. have to tell him that. Yeah, no, I ain't tell him nothing. He did his research, research. Yeah, but 40, see, 40, so, 40 so solid. Like if I tell him I'm on the road with Snoop, or tell him I'm on the road with somebody, that's his, that's his partner, like Cube with Snoop is his partner. So I told him I'm doing it with Cube, he had hit him up. That's love. I didn't bro. hit him with Snoop though. I, mean, I dropped the ball on the Snoop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did he yeah. find out afterwards? Yeah, but the thing about it was, Snoop's uh, team, they like very protective of him. You can't get in his dressing room. You can't get around him. Only thing we said to Snoop on the whole tour was he was like, you know, good shit, cuz. He gave me the pound. That was cool. But that was cool. I wanted to kick it with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, did you even get a picture? You couldn't even get nah, a picture. I get no with picks. It. No picks because wow. it was like, it's, it's, it's like uh, everybody else on tours on this side of the arena. He got his own. Wow. Yeah, man, you know, so. we've been having a lot of people come on, man. Sometimes people a whole bunch of people. Listen, man. <laughs> it's been so crazy, man. We had uh we had uh you that say say cheese uh Don Chief dilemma that went on over here, man. Yeah. Uh some people say that Don Chief is a legend. Some people say that he's, you know, he's disgruntled. When you seen that, being a Dallas page and it ain't, you know, I know you have love for everybody, but yeah, when you facts. seen that yeah, I know people say, man, that damn boss talk messy. Nah, you just give people a platform. Saying, I'm like, like, nigga, whatever, man. Yeah. I'm just basically just letting a nigga get it off because somebody say, like, if you say this or that, mm-hmm. and like you just said, oh, no, I'm not speaking. That's cool. But if you speak on somebody, then you got to know that that person might end up on here saying something back to say, hey, man, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, nigga. You, you can't know be one sided, especially nah. when you say you're trying to be neutral. Neutral, is, be- see, neutral for me is like, if I know two people is into it, I'm not taking their side. No. But right. if you ask me some questions, like, I don't care what you ask me, I'm going to give it to you wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, so, no. So you talking about, like, that situation? Yeah, like, do you think, who was wrong in that situation? I don't think Chief was wrong. I think Chief was a legend. I think people got to understand, you out of pocket for discrediting anybody who didn't, who gave the platform to teach Dallas niggas how to do music. Yeah. How to stay out of jail, hustling, and doing the music. He did both. Like, people got to get that man his flowers. And if he irritated about it, that's just what it is. You can't tell another man how to not to feel. Yeah, but when you when you think about the fact of uh, 
some saying chief not working no more like that and they you know feel like uh you know um you know why would they post him if he don't have the music to back it up what chief what chief has to do is chief has to connect with the youngsters and show him how they stay relevant that's how i had to learn i got tiktok now um my son tell me if it's whack i said you like this uh, because at the end of the day you don't want to get lost in the sauce you don't want right. another old nigga that ain't really uh putting out nothing that's relatable because the niggas that was our fans 10, 15 years ago, they ain't on the internet. Mm -mm. They, ain't, they not um, coming out, um, downloading your music and streaming your music. So if you want to be streamed, you want to be relevant on the internet, you got to do something that's relevant to that generation. So do you, with, with Sean, the way, way he, he, did he do anything wrong by not putting Chief back on this Hell show? Hell yeah, I think so. I think Why? This, because this is what I feel. I feel that anytime you mention something about Dallas, at some point you got to have respect for the OGs. You don't got to respect all of them, but you got to have a platform to say, you know what, if this is a Dallas-based platform, show some love to Chief or tell Chief how he can uh, he can get his shit together. Yeah. Instead of just telling a nigga you ain't going to put him on that fool, it's like, yeah, help, that, help that man out. Do you mean help him to understand why? Man, it's not about helping him to understand why. Show him the direction. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Teach him because we, we, didn't, we, didn't we didn't have uh, social media when we was out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a whole different ball game now. You gotta be a, at some point you gotta be a stand up nigga and be like, you know what? I'm not gonna argue with you, bro. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So do you think because he did that early on interview for for uh Sean when he didn't have to, you feel like Sean should at least gave him the respect to say, Hey yeah. man, this is how you need to link yeah. from here on out. Because because I ain't gonna lie, say cheese is a big platform. Right. A lot of people watch that platform. I I I He's been on here a couple of times. When you look at like 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 Sean basically having a platform like he got building it up, right. you think Dallas had a lot to do with that foundational bill for him? Yeah, I did interviews early on with Sean too, so, but I also I also did some shit like how Chief is feeling right now. I did an interview with uh, Terry Blue, and I called Sean Cotton a whole ass nigga. Why? Because. I was calling his phone, calling his phone, calling his phone, and he wasn't answering. He say he working on that. Yeah, but that's to me working. He on, does that to everybody, right? But to, you gotta understand something. We come from the era. If you don't, if you don't want me calling your phone, just answer the phone. Say, hey, I'm busy. But I had to. I had. I put my foot in my mouth and called him a whole ass nigga. That's the clip they ran with on the internet. Ah, oh, mm -hmm. damn. Because somebody said, "Why was you so mad?" I said, "Cause I'm in a meeting with Atlantic Records, and they're like, do you know Sean Cotton?'" I'm like, "Yeah, I know. I'm finna call him. Boom, get to Houston. Key, I didn't need his number. I'm blowing his phone up." He didn't answer, but I texted him on his birthday and he responded. So I I kind of harbored those so, emotions, right? Yeah. But when I did the interview, instead of me answering how I should have answered, I called him a whole ass nigga. They ran with it, and them young niggas told me up in the comments. Yeah. Because they don't they look say at, you old and disgruntled. Well, they ain't call me disgruntled. <laughs> <laughs> they just was like, what kind of whole ass nigga get mad because another man won't answer the phone? And, but my head, I'm like, bro, if you call me to do something, I'm going to answer the phone. I come from the air. I, I don't know if I told you that story about PMC. He said, if somebody your nigga, you should be able to call him on the phone. If they pick up the phone, they show nigga. a lot of days. He told short. He told um my nigga Beto about um short dog when he had uh, called short dog a fake nigga. He told Beto man call that nigga. It was phone him on. That nigga answered the phone. PMC was one of the people, so I stand on those principles. My problem was I shouldn't have said it on the interview. I should have just waited till I seen Sean mm -hmm. and said, "Yo, did I do something wrong?" Because we don't we 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 act off. Old nigga emotions, bro. Yeah, so you know so what I'm saying. You, you really, don't care. Hey, did you ever get a chance to talk with Sean and tell um, him? Tell him, hey man, not yeah. face to face, but I've told people around him that I should have never like disrespected that man, called him a whole ass nigga. And I'm, I'm, I'm one of the people like you said, you're human, you made mistakes, but you gotta be man enough to say, you know what, I shouldn't have called him a whole ass mm -hmm. nigga. Yeah. But what I should have did was wait till I seen him and asked him like, yo, why you don't pick up the phone? Cause yeah. you know what happened next? My wife is watching um. Uh, Big D, the mogul, his yeah, interview. Big D. And he said, What's your biggest problem? He said, Man, answer on the phone. <laughs> right. so yeah, I he felt, said that I on here too. Stupid as shit. And that's mm -hmm. why when I seen I seen it on here, he said it too. He said so it I, on here. But I don't it ain't no smoking no with me and Sean. I think of me and Sean, we probably laugh. He probably not even remember that shit. But yeah. it it hurt me because them young niggas was in my inbox. <laughs> like, they don't play by Sean, man. man. They've yeah. been on chief about Sean. Like they yeah, he got a hell of a following, you know. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I like to you and, and to him mm -hmm. and just I'm forever indebted because for the fact of you guys didn't have to come over here like you did. I always look yeah, at that. She know how I am. Right. I don't play about it. I'm going to check on you. I, right. I, I check on everybody. And I just, you know, him, you know, I don't call him yeah. because I know he ain't going to answer. 
Or I think you ain't gonna answer. Right. So I'll be like, I'll text him and say, man, you good, man, keep pushing. Yeah. I don't want nothing back, but I'm just saying, hey, because not only him, I've be, been friends with a lot of people, like certain people that left here and became multimillionaires out of this yeah. store, and, and, and they didn't answer the phone a lot of times. But then they came on my platform and was like, E, I, I respect you so much because yeah. when I was playing ball and I was here, you you didn't you would always just check on me and yep. you never did. You knew that I was busy and you a hustler, so and so he got it. You know what I mean? Can I be so real that, with you? That's the way I look at Sean as well. Can too, I be though. real with you? Go ahead. It's a new generation and they deal with mental health differently. Right. Differently. When we was coming up, even your mom was having a bad day at work, she still had to come home and face reality. These youngsters be like, you know what, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just click out and I'm just, out of there. I'm, I'm just not gonna answer the phone. Shut down. Like, shut their Facebook down. Shut their Instagram. Yeah, down. we from the old school. You had to deal with it. Yeah, you suck it up and deal with it. But then a lot of times the old school they reacted in other ways mm -hmm. that wasn't healthy because right. you you didn't talk about it. That's where we we got the drugs that came in the play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but one thing I, um you said you said well Sean should have pulled um chief chief to the side and just mm -hmm. say hey let me show you how to do this. Right. But I don't know chief. Very well, you do. Very well. Is he the type of person? Is he the type of person that would have listened? Yeah. Or he would have. Yeah, see, that's you a good laughing. question. <laughs> you laughing. You know, he probably wouldn't have listened. I think if I think this is me personally because me and Chief have been in the studio. I was the first nigga to put Chief on Instagram live. <laughs> Soldier Boy moment. I was the first one. <laughs> he was at my partner Suave studio and I put him on Instagram live. He wasn't really feeling it, but I guarantee you, if Sean would have been like, "Look, my audience don't like this." I'm gonna show you how we can use what you got and turn you up. Cause Sean turned on my partner, she's drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't. That's for me. It's like if I know you can do something, and you don't do it, it made me feel like, bro, you don't, you don't rock with me. But that's you. Yeah. yeah. That's you. You don't. Sean, it, I, like I said, for him just to come on my platform and mm -hmm. being that he say cheese, yeah. that helps. You know what I mean? So yeah. when they, and you being fat pimp, that yeah. helps. Let's just. This is. I'm, I'm, just, I'm gonna just project this in the world. Let's just say when I get this next big hit record, right? I'm doing interviews with people and they start asking me about what's going on in Dallas. So, you know, who's the who's the media? Who's really out here putting in work? And I name drop everybody but you. When they ask me about you and I say something like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. How would that make you feel? I've been done like that here lately. That's my point. And I just kind of unfollowed the person and went on about yeah. my business because he evidently don't yeah. want to be involved with what I got going. Man, so it ain't no, and it ain't no, it ain't no thing where. I don't hate because I don't know them. I don't really know these people. But at the end of the day, if you the type of person that, you know, you see me showing you love, mm -hmm. and because I, I show love, I, I, like I said, my platform a little different. Right. I be showing mad love to niggas I don't even know just because I feel like nobody shows the love like they should, bro. I give you an example. Cash Page did an interview in New York, uh, maybe about a year or two years ago. The lady's like, oh, you from Dallas? You heard of Trap Boy Freddie and Yellow Bees? And she was like, no, I never really heard of him. They tearing her up in the comments. I DM'd on some big brothers like, hey, this is how you answer them questions. You be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I heard them doing their thing. You know, shout out to them. Because what you're doing is you deflecting the hating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't rock with somebody, just be like, oh, yeah, I see them doing the thing. Or instead of saying, oh, I don't rock with, I don't really listen to Dallas. Like, you never do that. You so, always try to just. You think she just need an yeah, No, no, no she didn't need that. It's because it's the younger generation. When you're 18 years old, she was like 18, like a baby. So she don't really know him. She like don't that. really know. Like, when I watch some of these interviews with a lot of these youngsters on there, especially like the younger women, they kind of, not, they're not timid. They just don't really, they don't really feel like answering a lot of them questions. It's kind of like, uh, they just, they're not interested because nobody's there to tell them, like, hey, this is how you answer these questions. Yeah. It takes time. I made a lot of uh, media mistakes, but going forward, I tell people, hey, answer it like this. Yeah, because you but isn't that what what the air and are supposed to do is pull them to the side back in the day before yeah and yeah. like teach them how to do these interviews yeah. and how to deflect for certain things yeah. and all of that back in the day they used to have um, artist development right. that's right have y'all seen little baby's new uh, documentary no no but I, I'm gonna watch it okay I ain't gonna I'm just telling don't spoil it I ain't gonna spoil it but I'm gonna say this the way he talked to interviews when he did his first interview and they got the video footage Charlemagne breaks it down about why it's so hard for street artists to do interviews in the beginning. They lack mm -hmm. trust. And you watch Lil Baby do interviews now, he can hold a conversation in the room. So anybody watching it, go check that out. You'll see Lil Baby That's dope. Transition. That's dope. No. Yeah. We got some dope artists in, 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 the, in the Dallas area, man. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys, man, um, 
definitely a dope, but we got dope artists in the South. I pay yeah. attention more to the South than anything. That's why I like to be referred to as South. Yeah, I don't, I don't play I don't the like Dallas like rule. Da- I'm, I'm not a Dallas artist. No, it's the South <laughs> for me. South artist. And that's the way, and you know where I'm Texas. coming from. We yeah. pimp C, we like, uh, we see. <laughs> we like, we alumni. We <laughs> <PMC. laughs> alumni, man. So we, we yeah. basically, we, ca- we trying to carry that legacy on and we know how he looked at it. Yeah. So you will hear me say stuff like that, but right. that's why I'm trying to do something to, Impress the South up, right. you know what I mean? Because I, that's the that's the whole game. Because you got some dope artists down here that don't get that love up on the East or West Coast. Right. So I be trying to figure out a way to do that. So you'll see me throw videos up, push yeah. people, try to, and they, I don't know these people, but I just say I gotta do this so that people will keep eyesight on on what we're doing down here since they watching Boss Talk. You know, For sure, man, man, and you that's gotta, the you part. Gotta just continue to big them up, man. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I'm <clears> definitely <throat> gonna do that. Any chance, any chance I get, whether I whether I rock with you, I don't. I can't go by that because a lot of them, like I said, I don't know them. Mm. So I can't be mad at somebody I don't know for not uh, rocking with me. I can't do that. But at the end of the day, if I like them, if I like a song, I don't go by that. I go by I like that song. I like, you know what I'm saying? That's what I go by if I'm dealing with the music. If I'm dealing with an interview or see somebody, I'm like, I like the way that guy handles himself in the interview. Might not know him, right. but still showing him mad love. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So what, what's his number one song on Amazon, man? Man, it's called Thick Fine Thick Woman. Thick Fine Woman. Yeah, Charlie Boy featuring me, Lil Ronnie, and No Shame. Yeah, how'd y'all come up with that? I'm going to keep it a buck, man. It's one of them records with, that proves to you that DJs be missing on records a lot of times. We okay. Did, we did this record 2013 or 14. Yeah. TikTok blew it up. Oh, TikTok, TikTok yeah. took that thing around. Girl, I, yeah, I forgot the girl name who cranked up the dance, and it was this dude. We called him working like working like a Mexican. Yeah, it blew up. Then he got the white cowboys dancing to it. Really? Yeah, man. Like, say, let me tell y'all something. When these DJs tell y'all these records ain't the ones, man, y'all better stop listening and keep pushing them records. Yeah, a lot of these DJs are haters, man. Really, a lot of them. hell yeah, most of them is haters, man. So you don't you don't. It, you don't play with it when it come down to it. You know they doing it purposely to try to keep shine off certain people. Yeah, because these labels are calling DJs and they deflecting them plays. So they working with the with the labels to Man, try to... Man, the same way, the same way Sean Cotton or Rainwater get phone calls from the label, DJs get them calls too and the label might be say, yo, man, is um, XYZ popping? And they say, oh, no, he ain't really got no motion. Come on, man. Really? I, I, you got to realize, <coughs> I got so crazy. many good relationships in New York. I used to be in New York when when a lot of these rappers was getting signed in Texas. I'm in New York in the meetings and stuff, hearing what's going on. Just like when we dropped the Stick Fire Woman record, man, nobody nobody was supporting this record down here. Nobody. Now it's number one on Amazon. <laughs> it was number six on TikTok, man. Like it was one it's of the, crazy, it was one man. of the bubbling songs on the Billboard. It didn't, it didn't hear Billboards yet, but it's bubbling. So like, man, people gotta stop playing. With, stop, stop playing with my catalog, man. Wow, and that's dope that you you know that, that you can't control what happens with this music now. Look at Rag Daddy, man. Rag Daddy start blowing up again on TikTok. On TikTok. Man. I'm saying like they treat this song like it's a brand new song. They, it, and that's huh. the whole game of TikTok. It'll take yeah. something. Me and you can say something right now, and it could go crazy. Mm-hmm. And you don't never know what that might be. Yeah. So you just gotta sit back, and it could be five years from now. And you said it five years ago with the way social media moving, and just like you just said, yeah. it could be ten years ago. Mm-hmm. But you know what? <clears throat> I tell people this, man. If you got longevity in this industry, ten years plus, you got knowledge. Yeah. You know, everybody don't make it ten years. A lot of people make it three years, and it's a wrap. They go back working at Walmart, doing yeah. whatever they doing. Yeah. Go to jail, crash out. But you make it ten years, you got knowledge. You know what you're doing. Wow, and you've been doing this a minute, bro. And so. I want, and I'm gonna tell you this live, man. I won't smoke with any artist, man. You know what I mean? Like when it comes to this music, I feel like I'm number one. Oh, I'm just gonna tell you this, and man. I, and no, I, and I, you said this. Supposed to no, feel that way. I'm telling, you, but I, I mean, this. see, for me, this is what I be seeing like the interviews and everybody getting there saying who's a legend, who this and that, man. I don't care about if I'm a legend or not. I tell people we could do a versus battle. Anybody? I was in about Texas. to say if you anybody. had to do a versus chat battle <clears throat> with uh, Duro, who would win? I would win. How? What? Flawless victory. And what makes you? What flawless? Victory? Can't nobody outperform me in the state of Texas, man. Like I'm the god when it comes to this performing, man. Big nigga moving across the stage, man. Like so that, I do this shit, but man. But he, he got big song. song. He, got, he got big song. Man, you got, I got big song. I got big song. You understand? I got records that people. Like, oh, I forgot that was his song. Like, bro, you ask any club what DJ, song would you come out with? I wouldn't tell you. No, nah, we. I wouldn't <laughs> tell you, bro. Like, first of all, there ain't no record that's gonna top Red Daddy, bro. Like, yeah, I created the Dallas, the whole Dallas club music. I created that. I produced it. Like, bro, I know how to control the crowd, man. I knew how to DJ MC before I was rapping, man. 
Damn. Like niggas gotta understand. I didn't wake up, bro. I didn't I didn't wake up doing this shit yesterday, man. So you just you had 15 years. You're doing it a long on, time. Man. 15 years in the game, man. I know what I'm talking about. I know I knew Yellow Beezy was gonna be a star. I seen that nigga perform in Jackson, Mississippi. I told him. Yeah, love Yellow Beezy. I told that nigga that love nigga gonna be a star. I hear it, bro. Sonic, I'm a creative, bro. It's the difference between being a nigga that can uh, punch in and rap. Da, 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 no, I've been creative. I start from the beginning. It's the beat, the bass, the snares, uh, the hook, the melodic hooks, man, coming up with them verses, man. Like, come on, bro. I changed the game, man. When I dropped Rack Daddy, nothing sounded like that, man. Nothing sounded like that. I'm getting money because I, I pictured the black band playing that, man. I'm doing TSU Homecoming with the cheerleaders, man, and the band. Stop playing with me, man. Ain't nobody out here doing what I'm doing, Wow, man. that's going to be crazy. Bro, I had everybody at Howard Homecoming dancing to Maserati, man, when twerking wasn't even in a thing. I had them twerking in Texas. I brought it here, man. Like, they better stop the playing, ice cream man. paint job went on, man, That's man. cool. That was a good record, man. It was a good record. Good. Hey, it but was you platinum. Gotta, but you got to understand, man, that shit don't sound like Dallas, man. Oh, it's different. Come on, he man. It's a different sound. Man. I, I made my music for Camp Wisdom and Cocker Hill, Gannon Lane, man. Cell five two three seven. When I made my beats, that's what I was hearing, bro. So you, yeah, you I definitely want smoke. So when the road watches, I want smoke, man. Do the verses, man. <laughs> do Lil the Ronnie, verses. Lil Ronnie, Lil Ronnie, Lil Ronnie and Tay High M, man. We used to do the Fat Ronnie show. We started in East Texas, man. Okay. At uh, in Tyler, we did a show, and I was like, man, I realized, like, man, we got a lot of records, man. I want a friendly fade, man, with that music, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, the road you want it. Uh, who else, man? Chief, you want it. Yeah, uh, Chief. B King, you want it. Anybody, man. Anybody. Run, I don't care who you name, bro. If they want it, let's do it, man. And you, you get out there. Hey, look, the, we follow, need to do the, it. Follow, the followers don't give you the hits, man. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> if you ain't been on the bill, matter of fact, if you ain't ever been on the billboard charts, man, this don't apply to you, man. Wow. Yeah, man. Ooh, like Cho, like Cho he said, he want to smoke with Kelly, yeah. man. That's the energy we putting out there right now, man. Anybody want to smoke with the, with the music, man? Let's do it, bro. Let's do it, man. So that's up. what's gonna keep it alive. And, and you gotta perform. You gotta perform. You gotta perform. You can't just be on stage playing your music. Nah, come on, man. Go once I take my shirt off, it's a wrap. Man, <laughs> I'm in the crowd with it, man. Come on, man. Stop man, playing. Let me ask you about uh, the. I Go wanted ahead, to I'm ask sorry. him. No, because you mentioned, you know, whenever Yellow Beezy, you already knew, you already had the air for it and mm -hmm. so forth. I remember somebody came on before and was saying like a lot of these legends need to go ahead and start their own labels mm -hmm. since they have the air for it and since they a lot of some some of them not really doing music as much or they trying to do music but it's not popping like it's supposed to. Right. So like why not turn that and still make money by creating a label and bringing these young artists and teaching them the things that you've been knowing all these years. Young niggas don't want to listen to the old niggas. Let's just keep it all the way real, man. When I was 21, 22, I didn't want to hear nothing nobody else had to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What it's going to take, it's got to take older, yeah. I don't say old niggas, got to be older, successful people who are relevant. Those are the only people who are going to be able to say something, man. Then you got to have a person like Sean Cotton, like Terry Blue, like y'all sell. That can mediate and say, hey man, this sit like a round table, like hey, let's try this. Yeah. At, when I look at QC, I say they figured it out. They figured it out. They OGs, you know what I'm saying? Like QC, Coach K and them, they OGs, man, but they running like a young label. Yeah. They yeah. figured it out. So it is possible. I think Dallas could do it, Texas do it. Yeah, I think Texas can do it. I think the South can do it. You know, I think each one got to teach one. You know, mm -hmm. I think we got to break down these walls and where people, like we were saying earlier, you got San Antonio over there. You got, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got San Antonio over yeah. there. You got, you got Oklahoma over there. That's you my got, favorite you, place. You see what man. I'm saying? You got, uh, you got, hey, Corpus Christi over there. Mm -hmm. you, Street you got East there. Texas over there. Yeah. All of that, that's, you can ride across East Texas in about three and a half hours mm -hmm. from, from uh, Paris all the way across to Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's a long ways, bro. You got yeah. a lot of people that I think we need to stop dividing these things up and come together like somebody that, with some sense and show some unity. Right. That way we can move the needle. It'll take some time, but I think we can do it, man. Um, respectfully, I look at some of the artists that try to... I, I shout out to Ro because he... Um, he got Austin over he, uh, Yeah, man. He got artists. You know, a lot of artists he put on. Ace Boogie, uh, yeah. Young Nation. Yeah. Um, some old people I remember he was putting on, man. Um it's a lot of artists just trying, man. You just gotta, we just gotta support people when they trying. Even if they don't, if they're not successful as we want them to be, we still gotta support them, man. No, I agree with that 100%, man. So, man, we've been doing a lot of different interviews, bro. We, we've we had some crazy instances in here. Some crazy shit. Man, I don't think, that's why I say How y'all keep the peace in here, man? Bro, it, it's not hard because I pray for people come on this show, bro. Yeah. I really, I'm one over here who just basically, what you see is what you get. It ain't yeah. no, it's the same for me every time. It might yeah. be a different person in that seat, but at the end of the day, it's all respect. 
music. You know what yeah. I mean? So, and it's love. But a lot of time, people be talking. I don't have to say nothing too much. They, yeah. they already got it on their mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's a lot of good people that done came in here like yourself. Right. Support the show. Uh, watch the show. Shout us out. You know, that give us inspiration, right? Oh, so a lot, that when people do things publicly, it means a lot these days. Yeah. You, it's yeah. about the cosign. That's it. You know what I mean? Even a like sometimes is, is good. I always tell people, yeah. if you can, even when you give me a heart or a pound or whatever on the comment, that that goes a lot because people say, damn, that boy, I didn't know he knew them. Yeah, 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 yeah no. So, that, that's and real. Then when I, and then when I hear stuff in the interviews, I try to uh, sh share it on my story, man. You know, I'm, I don't really like drama as much. Yeah. That's why I rock with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all kind of keep it. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens, happens. You know, happens, happens. Yeah, yeah. You know we ain't out yeah. here out, out the yeah. window with it. You know, I can say yeah. that much. I okay. learned a lot too. You know, yeah. what I mean? even yeah. like when the OG Bloods was down here. Ah, uh, they were just here. They were just here yesterday. Day for yeah. yesterday. Uh, you know, they politics. Uh, EXO. I didn't know she was. Uh, she wrote that record for Big Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was heart, crazy. It wasn't my, it? It really hurt my heart, man. Because she it, wrote it, happens. but he took it. Uh, it in her her perception, she had it. He did the same video on the football field. It happens though. Yeah, it, how about you said happens? When you're smaller, uh, it and, happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. It happens, man. <laughs> because right. you got to think about a small person who came out with something that's going to be a hit and then somebody bigger see it yeah. and be like, I can take this way further. Right. This person ain't going to have no money to get a lawyer to come yeah. after me. So, shoot, I'm just going to take whatever. Listen to, um, go listen to my Dougie. Mm hmm. And then go listen to Pretty Boy Swag. Damn. Just listen to it. You know what I mean? It's like people could come somewhere and hear something say, like you said, oh, I could take this back where I'm going and turn it up. Turn it all the way up. It happens, man. I, I got a list at home of records that I know that I came up with and I hear somebody else do it. I'm like, damn. Uh, they went there. Yeah, they weird. took it there. Yeah, but you can sue them for it. So, yeah, if you ain't got no money, you're wasting your time. Exactly. The thing I realized, everybody, This I'm going to say this to all the people that's watching this, everybody feels like somebody took something from them. I see producers all the time say, oh, he stole my beat. Remember uh, a couple months ago, they was getting on Yellow Beezy when he dropped this song. Um, the girl in Montana, she had a record that was mm -hmm. just like it. They was all in his ass, but mm -hmm. and for me, I was like, damn, I don't know, man, because you just never know. You really never know who's telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, you don't know, right? And that's the thing about it. I'm a firm believer in. I heard Michael Jackson say this about how, like, when you're a creative, God will give you inspiration, give you they call it ideal bubbles. Right. So if I come up with something, say, hey, I want to sample this Prince record, this Purple Rain. I sit on it for like two or three days and I end up not doing it. Then about a month later, it's out there. Trap Boy Freddy does the Purple mm -hmm. Rain song. Next thing you know, you're like, damn, you didn't stole my idea. No, he didn't steal it. It was just, you uh, you said it to somebody and it, it, it went into the world. The energy is out there. So I tell people, man, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Suing people is really a waste of money, man, if you ain't got the one And it's not even world. just that. I, I really don't believe that you come up with an idea right now that mm -hmm. you didn't even tell anybody. Mm -hmm. There's so many people in the world, you can't tell me that you're the only person that thinking yeah. about that same exact idea. Yeah, no Somebody could thing. be on the, on the other side of the world and come up with that same idea. No such thing as You a understand what idea. I mean? So yeah, I'm like, right. That's real. It's, but it's hard when you're passionate. Right. And it's also hard when you're broke. <laughs> when, you're broke <laughs> when you're broke and you feel like somebody done fucked you over, man, it's like... Man, I know this nigga stole my record. Especially when they know. made a lot of money off of it. Right, man. You, what do you think about T.I. going over into comedy? Uh, I like, I, I support, you like it? I, I support Tip. I, I just know that when you when you transfer, I'm not transfer, but when you uh, transition mm -hmm. from, to another, uh, you know, another, yeah, another art, it's going to be tough. Even like with the acting. I got in front of uh, some real thespians, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. and I blew it the first the first day we shot. I, like I fucked up the whole, the whole day. Next day we went to the table read. They said, "Hey, let's try something different." They broke it down. Stop thinking that you performing in front of a rap concert right. and focus on delivering the character. Exactly. Wow. So yeah. it takes time. He, it's not, he who, came it, on, right? who came on here and said that acting? Oh, um, Jordan Jackson. Okay. He's a comedian. He yeah. came on. He's like. And he does skits all the time. Mm -hmm. He's like, let me tell you, acting is a totally different beast. Right. You go in that, it's not as easy as people make it seem. Yeah. 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 I, I, I definitely um, bombed a few uh, shoots, but like, matter of fact, I'm in a movie coming out called Cream. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's coming out December, December 11th, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Shot here in Dallas? Shot right here in Dallas. Who did it? Uh, my mind just went fucking blank right now. She's going to kill me. Kelly, Miss Santi. Miss Santi. That's her name, Miss Santi. What's uh, about? Damn, oh, spoiler. You can't give it. You can tell what's in the trailer. It's just about the trials and tribulations of a, of a female. Uh, she went through things in her household. Okay. Confided in some people. And they what did you play in the movie? You I play like I play like her boyfriend. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any love love scenes? Uh, you know what? 
They asked me, was I comfortable? <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, I'm comfortable, man. Like, first they was like, man, you know, like, you mind taking your shirt off? What, nigga, I'm shirt off, man, belly out. And they were like, you know, you, would you be comfortable doing a love scene? I said, hell yeah, nigga, I'm, I'm good. Do I'm it. good, man. Like, I'm gonna do it. But respectfully, man, we didn't we didn't do it on that one, but I told them, any other family need me, man, like, oh, I'm ready because I take it seriously. What, the, okay, yeah, you. I definitely would've done it, though. You done it, wouldn't you, man? Yeah, yeah, with the quickness, You got man. down with them. Do you think um, I gotta ask him this right Tell here? Tell me, let's go. I really don't. I had never asked nobody this question. Uh, you being from Oak Cliff, mm -hmm. um, just felt like asking it. Do you think Boosie will ever come back to Dallas? He done been back to Dallas. Have he performed? He ain't did nothing like he, performed or nothing. Did I'm pretty sure he gonna perform again. You think so? Why not? Yeah, so you <laughs> why not, bro? Like shit happen. Every man, listen. People get shot every day. <laughs> You like tough, ain't you? You tough, ain't you? Come on, man. We talking about Bo Boosie too arrogant to never come back to Dallas, man. <laughs> he used to come here a lot, man, too. Look, let me tell you something. Man. I, don't, I don't know what the, the, the story behind that, but I know Boosie is arrogant enough to come back. He gonna come back. He might come back to Big T. Damn. But he never, but whenever he come back, he not gonna make it like publicized no. that he here. We never know. We never he's know. know. You know, he's Tupac, his favorite rapper, so. Damn it, boy. <laughs> and he a UGK baby, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely well, a UGK baby. That That's why I'm a big fan. Of yeah, Boosie, I man, uh, definitely <laughs> always looking at what he gonna yeah. do next, man. I, I, I hope one he day he be sitting in his seat. That's he why will. I asked that, you know, because I know he the, season, I know he's the type of cat that will come over and rock he's with solid, me. Man, Boosie's a solid dude, man. You know, I, I rock with Boosie. Yeah, Boosie so. got me one of my first shows. He I, did. I opened up for Boosie at a uh, club cert. It was uh, it's Medusa now, whatever it is now. Mm -hmm. You get he get people opportunity, man. Like mm -hmm. even T Rail was on here, yeah. and he get he got like that dude, man. Man, I love T Rail. He no, he's song, man. Yeah. But I just like the way you know he's his, his, his kid and his, his, his the situations he he talked about. You can't make that up, bro. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this is solid, solid. He good, dude, man. Tank rock with him. Tank really rock yeah, with so it. So I like I like I like him, man. I, I really hope that he gets to. Make it, make it like real, like real, yeah, like yeah. And just keep going. And he's very persistent because he mm. even say, like, he's not scared. Like, if he loves to do features, <laughs> and he's not scared, he'll hit you up and hit you up and hit you up till you answer yeah. him. That's good, man. Yeah, he been he been on some niggas necks. He said he yeah. running from it, man. He love Mo three though, man. Yeah. He love Mo three. That's yeah. the one thing. He Every did. interview, man. You know, and and then Rain. That's what Rain told him. He won't go to a show because he. Yeah, it, it'll hurt him. Yeah. You know what I mean? To hear them songs like that, man. I got a good relationship with him, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Boy, her. what? <laughs> Listen, man. I, I, I got to You know, I, I might start something called the fat, the, the fat Stories with Rainwater, man. I was just about to ask you, give me the, one of your crazy stories with about rain. rain. We had King of Diamonds open. And for those that don't know, I was one of the owners, one of the part owners of King of Diamonds. Okay. Oh, wow. Ricky, my cousin, okay. and uh, D. Wood. Ricky, Ricky D. Wood owns Pentagon. Yeah. And so for most people, they know the Fat Pimp spot, but Rain walks in the club, it's about like three in the morning, and I'm at the front door, taking the money. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, I never told him this, man, but this shit hurt my feelings. He said, uh, he said Fat Pimp, I, he said, hell no, I know you ain't got no fucking job. I know you ain't up here uh, working the front door of the club. He said, that's hell right, no. That's he right. said, hell no, bro. He's supposed to be in somebody's studio, but in my head, I was like, nigga, I'm over making sure we get this money tonight. Right. But to him, he seen me, it shocked him because he didn't know I was at the front door. It he, messed him up. And then called me, he called me, he said, bro, hell no, bro. You too famous, bro, to be a uh, He didn't like that, dude. Hell no. And then I had tried to do a podcast. I hadn't even started the podcast. I had just told my DJ, let's do a, pod, a radio, no, pod, not radio show. Okay. It was during the pandemic. I wanted to like uh, do an air check and send it to the radio station. Called everybody, got their clean music. Called Rain, well, I text him. He said, hey, I need uh, threes of uh, radio music. He didn't respond. He just read and didn't respond. So I'm like, all right, fuck that. I call him. He said, Fabian, let me tell you something. He said, nigga, you got about, mm, Maybe three, four more hit, hit songs left in you. He said, I'm not, he said, I'm not giving you none of more three music. I'm not giving you none of my artist music, none of that shit, because you need to be making music. You need to get to the studio and get the fuck out of Dallas. Quit fucking with them niggas over there. You fucking with That's his That's him. And that's that is like him. And, that, and that, that's him, bro. Like, me and him ain't never, like, bump heads like that, but he didn't, he didn't say some shit to my cousin because I might have liked uh, Yellow Post. <laughs> Yellow had a video up, man. I like that. Said, pop your shit that he told my cousin. Fuck Fat Pimp, man. Like, yeah, right. fuck with the enemies, man. Stupid, but, but the thing is, I never knew that it was. I, I want them niggas naive. They he know. watching everything. Yeah, yeah, man. But yeah. he got, he got, he got a lot of love man, for, a lot for a lot of, of people, man. man. That nigga, that nigga, man. He he'll tell you in a minute like how you feel. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he loved to talk mess though. He <laughs> oh, yeah. loved to talk mess. He called me. And he like, love you to death, but I he was talking. I put him on speakerphone when he in the car, so my my, my wife could hear. She gonna laugh because she be like, man. She said, y'all don't get into it. I said, uh. 
Nah, man. Not really. I let Rain talk, man. I let mm-hmm. Rain talk, and I listen to what I want to listen to. Exactly, exactly. man. Yeah. Hey, man. But it's a lot of good people in the Dallas yeah. area, man. When you yeah. when you look at all the people we've interviewed, even Low Deezy, Low Deezy, one of those guys that Solid. come over here, man. And he always Has he let you hear his music. His early music when he did that man, with that man, new, I, that, no 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 he no got no new no, no. music man Lodizzi got new music <laughs> he out there yeah, yeah, right. Lodizzi stop around, trying man. to like hide man why he hiding it I don't know man like that RPO what's my nigga that just died Snooty Wild man he yeah. got like brand new songs with him Lodizzi got a hard drive with all his music man but he don't, don't play that for y'all for him and Lodizzi do what Lodizzi want to do no Lodizzi is a daddy and a manager man right come on man Lodizzi dropped the music yeah yeah man he's just doing it for the hell of it I just seen Lodizzi not too long ago man you know what's crazy I always running him out of town too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me give me the story about how you end up being uh, getting signed or affiliated to rap a lot. Cause um, it, it was something happened. Yeah, this uh, is what, I got this insight, man. Like yeah. some slowed your career down. Yeah, uh, tell me what happened. All, with that. all bullshit aside, it was um, it was a, cl- a company out of Houston called okay. uh, Yippie Records. Yippie was supposed to be like a, a money backing situation. Signed with them because I met Mr. Lee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mr. Lee was there. Scarface was in the uh, office. Um, that was one of them surreal moments. I seen Face. I was like, that's Damn. real right I there. I ain't never met face. that nigga. I'm like, this nigga real. real. You know what I mean? Face. Met, yeah, I met him. I oh. met him when I was young. We were both young. That's my, that's my we, uncle, man. Yeah, we uncle were young. Face. We was at Lakeside. And, and yeah. he, I remember you told me that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Him and Too Short. So, yeah, guy with Lee um, was solidified the deal. I was talking to Block Entertainment. He wanted me to do Boys in the Hood Part 2. It was, uh, my shout out to my boy Ray Potter I grew up with out here He wanted me and him To be part of Boys in the Hood Cause Jeezy was already gone Yeah And Shit started moving Got the phone call man And we going to LA Sit with Warner Brothers We sitting in front of Warner Brothers And I'm like man For a nigga from Texas To be in, out here in LA With the palm trees Yeah It was on Didn't sign a deal Waited about another week Went to New York again Met with uh, Universal Okay I'll tell you about that story later then maybe one one of brothers found out we were there, and the guy who interviewed us in LA was like, "Man, sign that nigga right now! Like, stop playing." So got the paperwork. We said, "You know, we go back to Houston and we sign it or whatever." Go to Houston, read the paperwork, we sign it. Big party when we get home. A week go by, need your bank account information. I'm like, "All right, cool." I'm telling all my niggas like, "Yo, we finna be paid like three hundred fifty thousand dollars finna be in the bank yeah, account for, the, front. for the for the for that wire yeah. I'm like, "Ooh, shit!" Cause they almost done. Yeah. Man, I get a phone call. Hey, I need you to pull up to the house. That's what mm. Mr. Lee said. I'm like, all right, cool. He had a big projection screen in the studio. He clicked the email and it said, cease and desist on behalf of James uh, McMillan, which is Jay, is Jay Prince uh, attorney. Damn. Mm. So, I'm still young, not understanding like, right. what the fuck is a cease and desist. And he said, basically, like, they're trying to, like, say that the uh, contract ain't valid. And I'm like, why? He said, because of Jay Prince. But he never really explained to me what was going on. Yeah, but I was about to say, like, why would he do that? He had his own um, contract um, situation with Jay Prince. I guess that he wasn't allowed to do what he did. Okay, Mr. Oh. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. And then I found out that um, Jay was partners with the uh, the company that I was signed to, the Yippie Company, and he's the one that set up the deal. And so somebody in the midst of that tried to snake him out the situation. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah. To this day, I don't know who who was the person that um that like tried to cut him out the deal because I didn't know. I'm just thinking. Fat Pimp signing the Warner Brothers, and that's just what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, somebody snaked him, man. Somebody um, snaked him. And this is how it got ugly. Because now that I'm irritated because I got the whole world thinking I'm signing the Warner Brothers, I'm out, I'm still trapping it, you know what I'm saying, in our apartment. Because I'm like, shit, I got to look the part. Yeah. Right. Then I get other labels like Jive, uh, Manny Fresh wanted to get me signed to Atlantic Records. Um, just a whole bunch of different people was trying to get me signed. But they kept saying, like, somebody is saying that you signing them. And I'm like, can't be nobody. I run into... Um, I can't think of this dude's name. He was an attorney. He was like, yeah, man, there's some people speaking bad on your name. And I found out who it was. It was the Yippie people. Damn. Mm-hmm. They was mad because I was trying to go get my own little situation going. And Mr. Lee kind of had disappeared and went and started doing his own thing. I ran into Jay Prince. Seen Jay Prince in the club. Told him what was going on. You can't just walk up on Jay, but Jay was very inviting. Yeah. Invited me to the section. Um, gave me a bottle of wine and shit, man. And um, I told him my case. Just said, this is what's going on. They keep saying I'm signed to you. And this, he's like... It was like, no, nah. he said, you did what you was, you know, what you was obligated to do. And he said, matter of fact, I'm going to call you. We're going to set up a meeting. We set up a meeting. Jay was there. Mr. Lee was there. I was there. My manager was there. And the nigga that was holding my contract was there. Jay told that nigga, he said, get that man his paperwork, his release papers, and stop playing. Damn. Made him get <laughs> a calm tone, though. It wasn't like how I just said it. He yeah. said it real calm. 
they tried to say they didn't have it, so he called an assistant to go in the office and they gave me a, uh, my release paper. Said it was done. And ever since then, it's been love with rap a lot because I, what's crazy about Houston is everybody knew everybody. That's right. And I'm living out there, man. They, they calling me to do the 25 year reunion yeah. on a rap a lot compilation. I did four records. I only got one. Dope, dope. It was me, Manny Fresh, Waka Flocka. Uh, juvenile, all on the same record and stuff. Dope. So it's nothing but love, man. With, with, with you know, it's mild ties, man. With me, you know, what man. I'm that's love, dope, man. I got love for Jay Junior. Come on, man. Jazz, my jazz. I'm trying to get that. What's that nigga name that, that we always be talking about on here? That that Jay Prince Junior got over there. Finesse, mm. Finesse, Finesse two, two times. Time. I'm trying yeah. to get that nigga on yeah. the show, nigga, man. Man, Solid I ain't got nigga. to never meet him, but my, my my co-host always talking yeah, crap about him. That is love, him, man. I got to get that nigga over here, man. Matter of fact, he'll be here. He's supposed to be here. Yeah. So you want to make a call and get him over here for us? My brother, my baby brother's bringing him to the club. Up. Don Chief say he was gonna bring, bring him to his birthday party. Oh yeah, his birthday. That's that. Damn, that's next week, huh? Yeah. yeah. Damn, we gotta make it happen. We I'm gotta call get my brother. Get out from a car, my brother. Yeah. Okay. See if but, he'll yeah. come through for, for yeah. a little. We gonna yeah. be out of town after. Well, we next week we gotta get that nigga quick. Yeah. We gotta get yeah. that nigga this week. I'm gonna try to see if I can get, get him in here for y'all. See if you can. Yeah. I'll show people, man. man, I love the interview, yeah. man. My, my brother, he real tight with him. So for sure, yeah. man, that's dope, man. Take Anybody that you think need to be on this platform, you hit me up. You know, we be doing yeah. our thing now. Don't get nah, it see, twisted. That's what I was saying. Like, it's, hard, it's so hard to say, like, who who y'all ain't already interviewed or about to interview, man. Man, we every be time working, I be think, bro. Like, when y'all got hit that, I was like, damn, it's about time somebody nigga, to man. interview him, man. He been coming here ever since he was about 15. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he lived around the corner. He, you heard yeah. him on the interview. Yeah, and see, him, he's also somebody that um, I got a lot of respect for because when I don't got nothing popping on the internet, he'll tell me, like, yo, this record need to be pushing. He gonna hit never you. Ask me, never asked for no money. He vouched for me in the meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Like when um, I had dropped this record called It's Your Birthday that uh, Jay White produced. He ran it in V-Live. Man, Jay and White put me on yeah. Boss Talk, man. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, we gonna make that. I can make, I can make <laughs> no, that happen. No, I made him talk. Yeah. He okay, probably, yeah. I just gotta, we yeah. gotta make it happen. All the East Texas busy. family he got, nigga, yeah, she's yeah. a developer. <laughs> but uh, hit that, man. He, he made like that birthday song, the V-Live birthday song, it was your birthday and shit, man. So That's dope, yeah, man. Yeah, with them strings, man. I, like, think, I think he doing his thing, right? No, he's doing He's doing his thing. Any, yeah. Anybody that's a good daddy, I rock, rock with him. That's right. Them boys yeah. and them kids, man. I always call him. He's trying to figure it out, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I love that dude, man. I got, I got a lot of love for everybody, man. I think the only thing I lack in this city is just the, uh, the new artists. I be want to work with some of them. Some of them. Yeah, some of them stand, little standoffers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you and Charles ain't done nothing together? Me and Charles got a record. Me and Charles, uh, see, you got to realize, when I was living in Houston, like I'm, be, I'm like really like a lot of these. I'm, I was here, bro. You know what I'm saying? These niggas was 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 coming up, man. Yeah, yeah. I work with all of him. That's dope. Cho's a good nigga. The only thing me and Cho's ain't done recently. We supposed to be uh, getting a writing session going on. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting on. Okay, that's okay. my dog, man. Yeah, he was and I want to work with Sauce, man. I, I, Sauce was, I had had Sauce on this show, yeah, yeah. but I've been working yeah, on man. it. Tell that nigga stop playing, man. It's I had what's the name? Uh, Sauce Wood winning though. Me, me yeah. and Sauce Wood winning. Good nigga. Good, yeah, good nigga I love too, that nigga, man. Yeah, man. Sauce got a lot of good people over there, man. Vucci. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. That's my dog. I like Vucci. Vucci? Yeah, yeah, because you know, you ain't gonna get along with everybody, man, but Vucci, man, I I, I developed a social media relationship with him. And uh Sauce, man, I really wanna get one in with him. I got bro. one more question to ask you, man. What's that? You a big UGK fan, man. Nah, uh, when it went down over there at uh the verses, I you you probably seen my episode when I was crying and everything. But mm -hmm. <laughs> what, was, what what did you think about it? In, in, I was in, mad. In, I was mad. You was like me, wasn't you? Mad because See, you, I knew you know, I wasn't crazy, yeah, man. I, listen, this is the thing. I'm a by MJG, you know, feel I love too, them but too. It ain't the same without the pimp, man. Mm. Yeah. And then I feel like they shouldn't have had it in Atlanta, man. Oh, who was that? Should have been in Texas, man. That's just uh, me. Like, bro, me. come on. It should have been. I, 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 I told Bobo cool. that, didn't it? It should have been in Houston somewhere, man, where niggas from Texas could be there. And give UGK the proper flowers that they deserve, man. That's it. I, I felt the same you know way. What I'm saying? Like, that's just me, man. I'm, I'm like so. Pimp C, gonna be loyal, man. It's like you can't, you can't have fans. You with can't them, even man. play with them. Mm -hmm. Don't even play with them because mm -hmm. you play with them. Niggas get mad. We be over here upset. Like don't even mm -hmm. play. With. And I'm over here like, bud, man. You should have told them niggas you wasn't doing yeah. it over there. But yeah. then I don't know their situation, Politics, man. Yeah. Right. I'm just, but um, I want to mention because I know earlier when you were talking about your deal with Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. brothers you mentioned Universal, and you said, oh, I'll get to that later. What happened with Universal? <laughs> she want that info, <laughs> <laughs> man. Listen. Man, I don't never even talk about this, man. But I'm gonna tell y'all this: this whole agenda that they got going on right now with the rappers, you know, playing with the uh, I don't know what the no, what's that word when he kind of dressed like a woman and stuff, the mm. draw stick or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, I seen that. Man, I seen like I seen what their vision was, man, back in 2009. 
Really? And you so wasn't with it. Mm-hmm. You wasn't with it. It was like it was new. I'm from Texas, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like we don't we don't do that. We don't do that. But certain artists was over there at that time, man. You start to see like, oh shit, this was the whole plan because it's working right now. Wow. Mm-hmm. Are you, so do you regret not doing it? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> nah, I stand on principles, man. Like I, I follow. You gotta really, I follow Farrakhan, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, nah, 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 because I, I, I'm like so. I'm like so pro black man in the house. So pro like being a black father, Shit, man. So certain things I'm not compromising. Man, thank you so much, yeah. man. We love you, man, for Appreciate sure. Appreciate y'all, man. Man, Fat Pimp, you one of them guys, man. You know over here this platform, you know yeah. we open door for you, bro. So I really want y'all to continue to just keep growing, man. For me, I love seeing just the growth. Thank you, man. We gonna definitely keep working. We and then y'all, y'all, I be seeing the hate, too. That's all right. That's I've been right. seeing the hate lately. It, 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 that's when I say, you know, these niggas have finally made it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I got I have a mutual nigga I, that I'm cool with, man. I seen him hating one day, and I was just like, man, he can't do that, bro. But you don't know them niggas, thing. man. He I, like, like you, he don't even whoever was doing probably don't even know us. Nah, a lot of know, people don't know us. Don't know, you know that. But the thing about it is, when they hating, bro, that lets you know you on their radar. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And, so and, uh, like you, with Chief, that's what I'm telling you. With Chief, by him doing what he's doing, y'all don't realize y'all are letting these young niggas figure out who he is, man. That's right. what it is. Yeah, right. man, you know how many people looking at his interview and, yeah. and looked at him and went back in the comments and said, man, I listen to that nigga music. That nigga music Come on, man, stop playing, bro. That nigga music and dope. And they like, to him hey, man, Give Chief his flowers, <laughs> man. And these were out-of-state yeah. niggas. This wasn't yeah, no niggas. These were just man. niggas that looked him up. Yeah, I was like, Chief damn. Flowers, man. And also, at the same time, give Sean Cotton his flowers, too. Man, man. Right. Hey, like I said, right. I ain't gonna never, never forget him coming on here he didn't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like you don't get don't get it twisted. Now we got yeah. a dope setup, nigga. Don't be, don't yeah. be like. <laughs> hey, listen to when y'all get off here, get on YouTube and listen to uh, Dallas versus everybody. Okay, mm-hmm. it was Sean Cotton and my boy DJ Frosty. Okay, and they put this project. It's this one song. They put this little song together. Keith on the uh, track did the beat, and Mo Three goes last on there. He was like the last person they added on there. When y'all listen to it, you'll realize how important. Bridging the gap is because I don't got on records with Mo Three, you know what I mean? I'm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the only record I ever got with him, and that happened because of Sean Cotton and DJ Frosty. Wow, yeah, it's man. a lot of people. It's a lot of people on that song that ain't rapping no more, man. But when you hear Mo Three, you can kind of hear like why he was that nigga. I gotta ask you this: when you say that, a lot of people, you know, it's been now. It's been some things mm-hmm. saying where that you know, like kind of like like Sean caused this boy to crash out. Uh, been a, a few people that came on and people. I hear them said stuff like that. How do you feel when you hear people say that, like like Sean calls Mo Three to get in that situation? Mm, I'm gonna say respectfully, man. Like you know, like I don't think no man causes another man to crash out. I don't really feel like Mo Three crashed out. I just feel like, man, just the powers that be, like God didn't want him here as long as he, you know, longer than what he was here for. Yeah, so, I like um, it. Mo Three kind of went out. You know what I'm saying? Mo Three went out in a real effed up way, man. But I kind of feel like. Even in death, man, I feel like he still was in control. If that's if that's if that ain't too weird, yeah, yeah. yeah. Money yeah. Moses always tell me he wasn't, yeah. he didn't, he wasn't trying to get away like that. Nah, he said he man. looked at him on the on the camera like, man, he wasn't trying. It was like he could have left, man. He was just trying to doing yeah, the most. He could have jumped over. He could have yeah. did this, you know. And everybody got their thing they say, but mm-hmm. man, Mo three, man, like I said, he, short man. Listen, long live Mo three. Mm-hmm. He got them kids, them three kids, man. I got to yeah. shout them out. His mom, man, his family, man. Uh, we open this platform up, and I've always, you know, try to make sure that 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 we show him love in some kind of way, especially dealing with rain or whoever. Right. Same thing I do for anybody, man. But definitely, man, when somebody passed on, like C. Strug brothers came. Did you see the episode when they came yeah, in? Yeah, you know C. Strug's in my day one, man. You know, I, I that, that, that did that, you that, see his brothers? Yeah, though? yeah, that was dope, right? Yeah. I can't look at them, man. Cause he looks just, just like him, like yeah, him. man. Like I mean, like me and C. Strugs manager ATM man. Like it be days, man. We sit on the phone, talk about Strugs, man. It hurts, bro. Yeah, it's hard for me to look at them, man. Cause I see even when I see his kids, man. I just it's he tough, man. It's like tough, him. man. Yeah, I, uh, man. R.I.P. Strugs. That's the only C. thing that bothers Strug. me about him. Nobody, nobody really be bigging up his name. Yeah, like you know when he was here, he helped a lot of people out, co-signing and, and boosting them up. But they don't really be screaming my brother name no more, man. Wow. And I, I guess I, I got to mention Roy Lee now. I done talked about everybody else. Mm-hmm. So Roy Lee, he's another yeah. one, man. A lot of I wish I knew him. I didn't really, I didn't never really, really I never him. got a chance to I didn't to get like, to meet him, but I heard so many stories and I seen him because I watched him when him and Boosie and him had their thing, man. Uh, so I think he said, hold on. 
And uh, so uh, you know, it's a, it's just a trip, man. So we yeah. gonna let we gonna let it down because we me we we just been riding. Yeah. <laughs> I no, like good, riding, man. Man. Appreciate Check it, man. man. We love you, man. man appreciate it, man. man my boy Fat Pimp in the building, y'all, yeah, man. Sure. It went down, man. Hey, holla at your boy. It's a unique hustle. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. What a boss is talk.